guys, what is going on today? Bo Joa here, and welcome to our very first episode of our NHL 19 Franchise Mode series. Now, I know we only got through four episodes of our Vegas series last year, but I can guarantee you guys I'm definitely going to be doing a lot more Franchise Mode stuff this year. The game is definitely a lot more fun to do, especially with the revamped scouting system. It's a lot more intricate. It's pretty much random every single time you launch up a new franchise mode and i hope you guys will enjoy so make sure you guys go down that thumbs up button down below leave a like if you're excited for some franchise mode stuff on the channel subscribe if you guys are new if this is your first time here hi how's it going my name is bojo uh also go by joe bojo joe whatever one works for you and uh yeah welcome to the channel make sure you guys subscribe because there's going to be tons of more NHL 19 stuff I'm going to post for you guys. No face cam here today because it's franchise mode. It's going to be quicker to edit if I don't use face cam. And the menus are completely flooded this year. So if I throw face cam on here somewhere, something's going to get blocked out. So you know what? We're just going to go opt for no face cam. If you guys want to see face cam, other series definitely will have it. And also make sure you guys go check out into the am.com use code BOJO for 10% off your entire order if you guys are looking to upgrade your wardrobe. So as you guys can see in the title of this video, you know what team we are doing, but I also want to thank you guys because we ran a bunch of polls on the community tab of my YouTube channel and you guys voted and it came down to the Montreal Canadiens and the Toronto Maple Leafs for the final two teams to decide from. And obviously the Montreal Canadiens indeed were the winner, so they are going to be the first team we choose for franchise mode here in NHL 19. So I'm going to run you guys through the settings that we are going to use for this franchise mode. It's pretty simple. We're going to turn owner mode off. There's really only going to be three things that we are going to leave on for this series. It's going to be CPU trades are going to be left on. The NHL salary cap is going to be left on. And the fog of war is also going to be left on. I'll show you guys the in-depth settings in just a moment. But those are the three things that we're going to leave on. I'm going to leave owner mode off because there's so much nitpicking in fog of war and scouting already that just adding the owner mode I think would overwhelm everything and all the nitpicking stuff that I would have to do. So here are the settings. I actually have a saved preset for you guys as well because I've had this game a couple days early, so I had some time to work out with my good franchise mode buddy, Tugi24. Make sure you guys go check out him as well. Give him a sub. He definitely needs them and will deserve your attention for giving him a sub. But we ran the, through a couple tests here, and I think these are the best settings that we're going to use for uh, franchise mode here on YouTube. So injury is going to be left off. I might turn them back on during the season. I'll have to lower the injury currents, but you guys can let me know. Injuries on or off. 25 years of length, superstar difficulty, and other than that, trade difficulty is on hard. But now we get to the Fog of War stats. Now, we're going to leave everything off. You do have the option to turn things off or on depending on how you want it, your own franchise mode to run. You could choose to leave the attributes, the overalls, roles, player types, and potentials off or on, which means you won't have to scout for those specific things. But I'm going to leave every single thing off. And for auto scouting, I left it to both. Now, I found out that leaving it to both means that the CPU will assign all your scouts for you. Now, it's easier to leave it on both and then specifically edit the scouts you want rather than setting each individual scout up. Because through the tests I've run, the pro scouts are kind of already set. You really don't need to touch them all too much unless you're going to be looking for those specific players either in free agency or in the trade deadline. But your amateur scouts, you definitely want to take the time to edit them. But leaving them on, leaving them on both and having them preset already will definitely help you out in the long run. Here's the new hub for franchise modes. You guys can see a lot more crisper, not a lot more cleaner, much more easier to follow. And we're going to start off right going to the assign scout section. So as you guys can see, you currently have 17 out of 20 scouts assigned, and these are random. Every single time you load up a franchise mode with a different team, all of these scouts are going to be completely random. You're never going to have the same one scout for a team. So I'm honestly going to leave the pro scouts left alone because there's really, once again, no reason to touch the pro scouts at all. Amateur scouts, I definitely will go in there and change up a few things because I definitely want to evaluate some scouts and then sign some more additional ones to really lock down these uh, prospects. So as you can see, when you leave it on auto, Sometimes they'll just be already set for certain scouting dates. You can see when the estimated date of when they're going to be done 
over under current assignment. So this guy is going to be in the queue of JHL signing a bunch of specific players for skills assessments. There's lots of guys down here for potentials. Uh, lots more potentials and comparisons. And I actually got lucky this time because there are certain circumstances where if you turn the morale system off like I did, there will be some scouts that will scout for a character assessment. So you'll want to switch those to scout something differently if you're playing with the morale off. But I got lucky this time, so I don't have to do that. And I'll definitely, uh, let's just do one scout in particular here. This guy's actually almost done. Uh, Elianuk, who's a U.S. Central scout. Let's see, is he actually a decent rating for the u.s central he's an a okay so he's almost done he's scouting this one guy lawrence i'm just going to have him find prospects in the uh central area and usually the good time period i found is roughly either six weeks to two months i found two months to be pretty pretty good so i'm just going to have him scout for any position any prospect quality for the two month duration and he's going to get sent out there as you guys will see it should be yellow i think is he yellow? Uh, no, I changed him immediately. Okay, so he's out there. He's going to be scouting those guys for two months. He'll be done on November 10th, 2018, and then we can check up on those players that he scouted, and then we can maybe send him somewhere else because that's one thing you really have to concentrate with your scouts is that once you've found that there's either nobody really important in a region or you scouted already in a region, that's why their region familiarity in multiple different places go, is going to pay off. Since this guy is pretty good in the USA, if I figure out everything in the USA Central, I could either send him to the West or the East, or maybe I could send him off to the WHL if I need some more help in that area, or I could sign some more additional scouts as well, maybe with some A-plus categories in here. Got a lot of D scouts, overall scouts for Montreal, which kind of sucks. Uh, the Flyers and Minnesota Wild tests that I did, they had some like... Um, like B and C plus scouts, but Montreal will have to do some evaluation with them. All right, so let's take a look at our team starting off on the back end here. Carey Price is pretty good, isn't he? Yeah, he's a pretty decent goaltender. 92 overall, highest rated goaltender in this game. Uh, elite potential, contract, not great though. $10.5 million for eight years. It's going to be tough to move that contract. It's going to be incredibly tough to move that contract. I don't even know if we're going to be able to move that contract. We might be stuck with Carey Price for at least eight years of this of this uh, franchise mode because I don't think anybody's going to take on a $10.5 million cap hit unless I eat up a ho huge chunk of that and then I'm stuck with like a buyout penalty for an extended period of time. So we might be stuck with Carey Price unless we can figure out a way to move him, which is not bad because we have the best goaltender in the game. But the backup situation is not too great. We do have 2.2 .2 cap. Uh, 2.2 mil of cap space available, so we could definitely sign a backup if need be. Uh, Niemi is a backup at 76 overall, which is interesting. Uh, Prospect-wise, uh, we have Charlie Lindgren, who's a 77 at a fringe starter, and then uh, Michael McNe McNiven, who's an AHL starter, 64 overall. So Lindgren is a fringe starter, so he'll probably get the AHL time for the first couple of years. He might turn out to maybe like low 80s if we're lucky, but... A goaltender prospect is definitely something that we need to look for for this team for the future because Harry Price is definitely going to drop. He's going to drop quick. He's 31 years old. He's definitely still in his prime, but moving away from that contract is going to be incredibly tough and being stuck with a 10 mil cap hit, not the greatest. Speaking of bad cap hits, let's move on to the defense here. Shea Weber, 87 overall. Once again, that's good. Elite potential, 7.855 mil for another eight years. So we're stuck with Carey Price and and Shea Weber tied up with, what, $18.3 million worth of cap in two players for at least eight years of time. We're going to have some fun here in Montreal, aren't we? But other than Shea Weber, it also drops off tremendously in the defensive department as well. Petrie's contract isn't great at, at either. 82 overall, 5.5 .5 for another, what, two years or three years? Three years of his contract. Bergevin just loves to screw this team up, doesn't he? I mean, Dupre is a decent overall for a really low cap hit, so I'm kind of glad that he's here um, as a top six. So he's going to fit nicely on that bottom pair. Alsner's contract is also pretty crap. One more year extra than what Petrie's is, so 4.625 for another four years. He's also 80 overall top six. We got to find a way to get rid of these contracts for sure because these they're bad. They're really bad. I don't even know if we're going to be able to get rid of them. But I'm going to try my damnedest. Uh, Schlemko right there, 2.1 for two years. That's not bad as like a depth guy, top six as well. Uh, Xavier Roulette, 
signed for one year, has a chance to maybe progress into something, so he's not too terrible. Jordy Ben, kind of like a depth guy, and then Noah Juleson is up on this roster. Uh, potential for a top four medium, okay? He's a depth defenseman, so we might need to send him down to the minors to get some time. Other than Juleson, our only other pretty good defensive prospect is Victor Mete, who's a top six role defenseman with medium potential to become a top four. So I would definitely flip-flop Juleson, send Juleson down to the minors, let Mete play on the NHL team, because... I don't know if this Montreal team is going to be good or not. It's like, it's so hard to tell if this team is going to be good because one, we have Carey Price, but two, our defense other than Shea Weber is pretty, pretty piss poor and our offense is kind of piss poor as well. So it's going to be hard to judge this team how well they do. I definitely think we should play Mete though on a top six role, maybe even a top four role to give him some more time. But other than that, I really don't think there's any other good prospects we have. Like, Mike Riley's medium top six, but he probably won't progress any further than that. And then it's nothing else. Like, uh, Eric Jelena, uh, Matt Tamarina, Renette Valia, Brett Lerno, David Skalinka. Skalinka, I think is how you pronounce it. Uh, Josh Brook, medium potential for top six. He's 61 overall. Nothing too crazy there. Kale Flurry, kind of ahl -er. Jarrett Tyzika, also low potential for top six. But, yeah, there's really nothing crazy potential-wise that this Montreal team has other than Mete, maybe Mike Riley. This Brook guy is going to take a while, medium top six, but he probably won't get anywhere high 80s. And uh, uh, Juleson, that's it. Juleson, Mete, and maybe Mike Riley. That's it for defensive prospects that this Montreal team has. So we got some definitely some uh, some working around to do with that defensive core as well. Like I said, it's... It's got good depth. It just lacks, like, high-end talent. All right, so we move on to the right wings now. Brendan Gallagher is pretty decent. 3.75 mil cap hit for three years at 84 overall is really, really good. Uh, definitely has the potential to score us a good bit of goals. His, what's his shooting? Like, yeah, mid high mid-80s for Gallagher. So hopefully he'll be able to put the puck in for us. Definitely going to be a top-line player on this team. He's considered a second-line forward, but he'll probably be playing on our top line if I'm thinking of the team correctly. Uh, Joel Armia. Gonna be a nice little depth guy, 80 overall. Uh, he's 25, high top nine potential, which isn't decent. And then Andrew Shaw right here, who's also making a good bit of money. 3.9 mil for four years. Why is Bergevin handing out these crazy, terrible contracts? My God, dude. Four years at 3.9 for Andrew Shaw is not worth it at all. If I can bury him in the minors, I will do it. Uh, we got any good potentials? Okay, Nikita Sherback, I completely forgot about him. He's pretty decent. Medium, top six, 76 overall, depth forward. Play him in the minors. Uh, Michael McCarron, 23 as well. Low top nine. Probably won't turn out all too great, but another decent prospect to have. Uh, Antoine Waked and Jesse Fjolinen. Nothing too spectacular with those guys on the right wings. Left wingers, patches. Do we trade them? I think we do. Probably going to be a trade deadline deal that we're going to do with Max Pacioretty. One year left at 4.586 overall. First line forward. Elite potential. Definitely will be able to get us a pretty penny come the trade deadline for sure. Because if we're not a good team, which I don't expect us to be a good team, but craziness has happened before. I definitely think Pacioretty is going to be a player that we deal at the trade deadline. We can get at least a first round pick plus a high tier prospect for him. So I definitely think Pacioretty is going to be a trade deadline deal. We have Max Domi on the team right now as well, 3.1 for two years. Obviously, we got rid of Alex Galchenyuk as he went to uh, Arizona in that trade. Second line forward, still pretty young, very, very young, young, uh, medium top six potential, 23 years old for Pat, uh, for Domi. So he'll definitely grow on this team. He's probably going to be second line for the time being. Uh, Arturi Lekkinen, also young, medium top nine, 79 overall. Uh, Nickel Delorier, bottom six forward, not going to be getting any better. And then Jacob Della Rose, who hasn't really progressed in like any franchise mode that I've seen for like the past two years. So maybe we'll bury him down there in the minors as well. He's technically a fourth line forward, so he might uh, make it onto the fourth line. Uh, prospect wise, Paul Byron's down there. He'll probably get fourth line time. He's probably a fourth line forward. He's actually a third line scorer. Uh, Kenny Augustino, who was tore up the AHL last year, if I can remember uh, correctly. Let me see his full career stats. He tore up the AHL last year, or the year before, right? Yeah, it was the year before he had 83 points in 2016-2017. Uh, 24 goals, 59 assists. So he definitely could get it done in the AHL level. Um, maybe in the NHL level turnover? Probably not because he's 26, so he's not going to be getting any better. 
Kirby Reichel is back once again from the trade with Toronto or Florida, one of those teams. Uh, so we got Kirby Reichel on the team. He's 23 years old. Once again, he's another player like Jacob Del Rose that doesn't look to progress at all. So we'll have to see through him. And then finally, as we go to the centers, uh, Jonathan drew in is elite potential. He is technically a center in this game, second line forward. So maybe pair him with Max Domi together would be good. Play him on the role that he's supposed to play in, or you maybe pair him up with Max Pacioretty on the first line and see how he does. 5.5 for a long time. How many years is that? Five years of 5.5. That's not bad if he turns out. If he can get to maybe like 88 overall, I'd say that'd be pretty good for Jonathan Drouin. Uh, Philippe Deneau is 80 overall, 25, medium top nine. Charles Houdon, 24 years old, uh, medium top nine as well, 79 overall. Thomas Placanix, 2.2, another maybe like trade deadline deal that we get rid of him. Uh, maybe it'll give us like a low kind of draft pick. That'd be nice. And then Brandon Fraze down there, 76 overall, bottom six, probably like a depth guy. Another fourth liner that we can fit on the team. In the system, uh, anybody really that great other than Kakta? Co I'm going to botch the living hell out of this. Jesperi Kakka Niemi, the guy who uh, Montreal went out of the way to draft. 66 overall, medium elite potential. He's definitely going to take a good bit of time. For us, so we're definitely going to have to keep an eye out on him, check out his overalls. But other than that, is there anybody else really that great? Uh, Lucas Videmo. Uh, yeah, Videmo probably a medium top nine. We also have Will Bitten, who's medium top nine as well, 63 overall. But I think that's about it. Uh, Hillis, Cameron Hillis. Uh, a couple more top nines right here. Jacob Olofsson and whoops, Jacob Olofsson and Alan McShane. More top nines. A couple bottom sixes right here. Cole Fonstad and Samuel Hood. Sammy Hood. So they're, they're unsigned, but they're like at 50 overall, so we can hold off on signing them for sure. And that's about it. That's what we're working with here in Montreal. We're working with a bunch of terrible contracts like Andrew Shaw, Carl Alsner, Weber, Price. But the top part of this lineup still doesn't look too bad, for forward-wise at least. I mean, you have Max Pacioretty, you have Jonathan Drouin, Gallagher, Domi. A lot of young players that definitely have room to get better. The core of this team is relatively young and around the 23-23-year-old to 20, uh, 23 year old range, which is good. With Drouin, uh, Domi, uh, Lekkanen, who else is kind of young in that 23-year-old range? Del Rose, but he probably won't get any better than that. Yeah, forward-wise, they, they're roughly between 23 to 25, so there definitely is a couple of years for improvement. Defensively, though, they're kind of like all out of whack with Weber, and then that's pretty much it. Like, bottom six defensemen, that's it. And they're all all old, other than Ouellette, Juleson, and Victor Mete. So, we have a lot of work to do with this Montreal Canadiens team, guys. You guys can let me know down below what you think we should do. I definitely think I should go out and get at least a backup goaltender. So that if we are competitive, we are pretty much reliable in net. I'm pretty sure there's going to be a decent amount of guys that we can go out in free agency and uh, grab for a backup goaltender. I'll just show you guys that really quickly as I'm signing off here. But yeah, backup goaltender is definitely something that we need to grab um, if we want to be kind of relevant. Like Let uh, Kari Lettinen, Steve Mason, Pavlik, Limbach are a couple of guys we can definitely go out and grab for our team who will be a lot better than anti Niemi. Uh, I could probably just send Niemi down to the minors as well, but backup goaltender is something we need. Depth wise, I think we're pretty good because we have a lot of like bottom pair guys, but a lot of third liners, a lot of fourth liners, and then a couple second line players, then one elite player in Pacioretty that we're going to have to figure out what we do with. But I'll leave that to you guys. Let me know down in the comments section down below what you think we should do with this team. Who do you think we should put on the trade deadline throughout the year? And then obviously I will set up all the scouting stuff off camera because it's going to be a little bit tedious and I don't want you guys to sit through all that. So let me know in the comment section down below what you think we should go, what direction what direction we should go with this Montreal Canadiens team. And other than that, I will see you guys in the next episode. Once again, make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you guys are indeed new, and I will catch you guys next time.